Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. So last week, we kind of finished it with nine. I ran into chapter 10 just a little bit. We're just going to pick up verse one again, because uh, I just kind of got into that just a bit. Uh, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record, they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. And what is it? Might be people perish for the lack of knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, go about to establish their own righteousness and, and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that what? Believeth. But the righteousness which is, uh, I'm sorry, for Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Now, I believe we're beginning to pick up a theme in the, in the, in the uh, teachings of Paul in understanding that the law, remember the, Paul wrote, the law is not bad. The law is to bring us to Christ. The law was given to show people that they were sinful and without God. And in um, and and building his doctrine, he now comes back and said, basically saying this, look, the, the, the law that you're pursuing, the things you're pursuing are right in that you want to please God or God, but you can't depend on them because the end of it all is Christ. You have to be born again and have been renewed by Christ so that it's not of your own efforts and ability. And a lot of people love their own efforts and ability. They want to be able to go to God and say, look, I did this, 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 and then you got to do that. Okay? But, but the, end of the end of the law is Christ. So the righteousness that you're pursuing by trying to obey the law and do the law is only found in Jesus Christ. And, and so praise God. However, you know, I, I like, uh, there's so much going on in the church right now, you just kind of, you can run off on rabbit trails every service and spend months over there. Amen. Um, Jesus is the end of the law. Or the, actually, he said this. He said, think not that I came to do away with the law, but I came to fulfill the law. Amen? And so he was the fulfilling of the law. Now, let me say that. He left intact God's moral code. God's moral law is still, invest, is still, is still accurate. It's still active. It's still true. It did not change because Jesus didn't say something about it. How many have heard this argument lately? If, since Jesus didn't mention it, then it's okay. Basically, that's what they're saying. You know, uh, one, one hot, hot button topic is homosexuality right now. And if, since Jesus did not specifically address homosexuality, then we're just to love people. Well, he didn't address pedophiles. He, he didn't address rapists. Are you here? He didn't address bestiality. That doesn't make any of those things open and okay. But why? Because he was talking to a people who knew God's moral law. They already knew what God's moral law was. He wasn't talking. Remember, I am sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So his sermons must be taken within the context of a people who knew the law. Not to the Gentiles. Are y'all here? You're going home. And so when you come along here 2,000 years later and you take Jesus' sermons and you take them out of the setting that they were being preached to the lost house, uh, the sheep of the lost house of Israel, uh, people who knew the law, who knew all the ordinances, who knew all the commandments, who knew and understood God's moral law, then you can say stupid stuff. Like, we're just supposed to love everybody. Jesus never said anything about it. We just love people. No, Jesus didn't say anything about it, but then he appeared to the apostle Paul, and then Paul was called up into a vision, and he was given the Pauline revelation, and in that Pauline revelation, he dealt with stuff. Hello. Now they're coming out trying to say the Greek words meant this, didn't really mean that, and all this kind of stuff. Folks, the Jesus came, and, and he, for God so loved the world, he, was, he, he came to fulfill the law and show the Jews Understand, Jesus' ministry at that time was to the Jew. It would go to the Gentiles and that all would, so that all would be saved. But in the present, and in his ministry in that day, his present day ministry is different. He's the high priest. 
But on his earthly ministry, he was ministering to a people who he came to fulfill the law that they were pursuing after. And here's what Paul's saying. He said, they, um, Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that they, the man that doeth those things, shall live them. But the righteousness which is of faith. Remember 9, 10, 11, he's, he's primarily speaking to the Jew. And I don't mean we can't get things out of it, but his, the context and the parameters of this message right now is he's speaking to Jews. Again, a people who knew God's law, knew God's moral law, knew that was working to obtain the righteousness that the law promised them if they could fulfill it. Okay? But the righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise, say, uh, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from the dead. Who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. And with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever shall call, uh, uh, call on the name of the Lord, I'm sorry, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. I'm sorry. <clears throat> for, the, um, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I back that. I would jump, just jump three short scriptures. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now Paul comes right here and goes, look, you Jews don't have anything on the Gentiles who call on the name of the Lord. Christ is the end of righteousness, of the law. The righteousness of the law was to bring us to Christ, to Jesus Christ, to be born of him and to have a faith righteousness established in your heart because you could not fulfill it in the law righteousness. It was impossible. Well, why did God make an impossible law? To show you you had to receive the grace. You had to receive the grace. It was impossible for you to fulfill it in your own abilities. You had to receive the grace righteousness or righteousness, which is about faith, which is a grace given to you. Amen. And now, um, but back over here, it said, verse 4, Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. Again, pointing to this fact that you know, all those works and all those labors of trying to obtain righteousness were going to become futile because you had to receive it by faith in Jesus Christ. Now, they rejected Jesus as, as, a, as a whole, not, as every, not everybody, because a remnant was saved. Remember back up here in chapter 9, it says... Um, in verse 27 of chapter 9, Isaiah also cries concerning Israel, that though the number be of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Now, these people go around teaching that everybody in Israel is going to get saved. They're not teaching the Bible. Hello? Oh, they're, because they're Abraham's natural descendant, they're all going to get saved. Well, Isaiah prophesied and said only a remnant of them are going to get saved. I need a little bobblehead choir up here. We can put on a little vibrating football table kind of thing. Get one of those old, remember those old football ta tables that were vibrating the guy running down the field? We need one of those that were little bobbleheads on that. I can't be able to flip a switch by the nail. <laughs> Fix it so the head can't go sideways. <laughs> they all agree with the pastor every time. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, understanding that Paul's now talking about the righteousness for Israel, that a remnant's saved, hallelujah, they're saved, and the remnant that is saved is saved because of a relationship with Jesus Christ. They believed and received Christ as the end of the law, and he was the righteousness for them. Amen. And then he goes on, he tells us, you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart. Then he comes down in verse 12, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. Why? Everybody that comes in the kingdom must be just like Jesus told Nicodemus, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. The Jew gets born again, the Christian, the, the, the Gentile gets born again. I do not adhere to the term Messianic Jew. The Jew that gets saved and the Gentile that gets saved, are, the middle wall of partition has been broke down between them, and they are now in twain one new man. 
So there's not a Gentile Christian and a Jewish Christian. If you're born again, born again, you're a Christian Christian. And the bunch that were first called Christians at Antioch were Jews. Go back and study your Bible. It was a bunch of Jews that were called Christians in the beginning. They weren't called Messianic Jews. That's some term somebody's come up with to be cute. I like staying with the Bible, quite frankly. I don't like calling stuff that the Bible don't call stuff. Hello? I like, I like it to be what the Bible says. That went over big. The scripture saith, whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, that for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So now Paul tells the Jew, remember he's kind of talking to the Jews here, look, the Gentiles that got saved and the Jews that got saved had to do it the same way. Had to believe that Jesus is Lord and God's raised him from the dead. You've got to confess of his lordship. You, you're, you're now born again. You've now received the righteousness. Now the Jews, he talked about this in chapter 9, the Jews pursued that righteousness but didn't get it. The Gentiles weren't even looking for it. They weren't even looking for that righteousness. But in the end, whether you are a natural-born Jew of the, of, the, of the natural lineage of Abraham and were pursuing righteousness through the law, or you were a heathen Gentile who wasn't doing anything, but either one of you come to Christ, you receive the righteousness which is by faith, and you enter into the same place. One doesn't have a leverage over the other. Woo! In other words, see, the Jews can't go around, well, we were Jews, we had it first. It's like the old Pentecostals. I grew up with old Pentecostal. We thought the Charismatics didn't have anything because we had, we had paid the price in the, the mud, the flood back in the early part of the century, and they just kind of came in out of all the non-Pentecostal non churches and got the Holy Ghost, and we were mad they got the Holy Ghost because we, we had the Holy Ghost first. No, you didn't. See, people had it on the day of Pentecost. They had it first. You're 2,000 years almost down the road. You didn't have it first. Been a lot of folk filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues way before the Pentecostal movements of the early 19th century came in. And I'm not making fun of it. I'm just saying with that mindset gets in there. Word of faith people. I'm telling you right now, I've got a Baptist pastor friend who's his post, man, looked like he just, got, he just graduated from Rhema. His last few posts, I'm like, my God, that's good stuff. But he's not, a, he's not a word of faith guy. I don't care. He's got revelation from the Word of God. That's good. Go help people. You know, we shouldn't get upset because they got it. We should be rejoicing that they did. But no, that's, that's troubling our territory. No, it's not your territory. It's the Holy Ghost territory. It's God's territory. We want people to get, we want people to get helped. Amen? We want people to get revelation. Well, we weren't the one that gave it to them. So stinking what? Hello? I mean, Paul got in one place. He said they preached Christ for gain. They preached Christ the right way. I don't care. Christ is preached. I've seen people get saved in gimmick preachers' meetings. How would that? Because God will just step right in the middle of a bunch of junk just to get people saved, get their hearts right. And if somebody's even on for, for, for wrong motive and wrong purpose preaching or sharing Scripture from the Bible, the Holy Ghost can still take that word. Why? Because that word was anointed no matter what. Now, the guy speaking may not be, but that word is, and God will take it and use that to pierce people's hearts. Who shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Well, those are all good questions. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring good, glad tidings of good things. But listen to Isaiah again. Now remember, he's talking to the Jews. But they've not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, now the, the, the Greek uh, form of Isaiah is Isaiah, and it's, it's translated, you know, e, um, e -S -A -I -A -S in the New Testament. But if you were to understand, tracing that back to the, the Jewish form would be Isaiah, the transliteration of Isaiah. So it's Isaiah. Saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? Remember that, Isaiah chapter 52, down verses 13, 14. Lord, who has believed our report, to whom is the arm of the Lord extended? Amen. 
So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Have they not all heard? Yea, verily their sound went out into all the earth and the words into the end of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses saith, I will provoke you to a jealousy by them that are no people and a foolish nation. I will anger you. See, he's going to let, he's going to come and, and they get, they got established in their pattern. They got established in their, 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 they were the God's chosen people and it didn't matter what they did. They were God's chosen people. And let me tell you something. That's the same mindset that some of these extreme grace teachings come in. We're God's people and nothing can change the fact we're God's people. If you start living contrary to the laws of God, yes, it will. Ultimately, you will be beyond, you'll go out to the place where you're no longer walking as one of God's people. You can get there. Well, I don't believe that. Well, that's your problem, but you know, stop teaching that stuff. You, you think you know everything? Well, and, but Isaiah is, Isaiah is very bold and said, I was found to them that sought me not. I was manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he saith, all day long have I stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient, disobedient, disobedient and gainsaying people. This is not a fireside chat. Hello? This is a stern rebuke. Y'all hear you going home. It is a reproof and a rebuke. And he's saying to the Jews, Jesus has come, but you know, and the Gentiles are going to receive him, but you, you, you're a bit disobedient and gainsaying. Hello. Verse 1, chapter 11. Well, I say then, if God cast away his people, God forbid. For I am an Israelite, the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. This, listen to this next verse. God hath not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not, or know ye not what the scripture saith of uh, Elias, Elisha? How he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men which have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. <laughs> if you jump in here and take that and say, oh, it's the election of grace, but you've got to go back up to verse 2. God did not cast away those who he foreknew. I'm telling you that Pastor Paul says, for whom he foreknew, he did predestine to be conformed to the image of his son is the answer to a lot of the election teaching or erroneous election teaching. Foreknowledge establishes what God does in a person's life what God called. God did not call you before his foreknowledge. And you were not rejected prior to his foreknowledge. He knew who would live their life out and serve him, and he knew who would never, ever accept Jesus. And in that, they were either elect or they were cast aside. Notice here, Paul says that God cast away his people, God forbid. And then he goes on there, for God did not cast away the people he foreknew. The ones he foreknew did not get cast aside. Y'all hear you go home. Hello? Have we got a problem? Don't look at that camera. Is it dead? Okay. All right. Just make sure. Well, stop taking up an offering. We're going to get it fixed. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God's, God gives this thing. He says here, uh, when, when, remember everybody, nobody was serving God? Only I'm, only Elijah. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. God said, I've reserved myself 7,000 people. Then he goes, even at this present time, I've reserved a remnant according to what? The election of grace. But the term election of grace must be tied back to verse 2. God did not cast away, pe away the people he foreknew. You cannot take that out of that context. If you do, you create a doctrine that's, that's, that's untenable with Scripture. All right. And if by grace, then it's no more of works. In other words, he's trying to tell the Jew, you cannot do this by working the law. You can't, the law will bring you to Christ, but you've got to go through Christ to get on the other side to get the righteousness you were pursuing after. Okay? 
and you can't work it. You're not going to be able to work it. You're going to have to receive Jesus. No way around it. You ever say, no way around it. There's just no way around it. You had to receive Jesus. If, you know, so even, if it's, even so, and if by grace, then it's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be works, then it's no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Whoa, who's the election? The ones he foreknew in verse 2. That remnant that he foreknew in verse 2. And those received the election of grace. They received the righteousness by faith. And the rest, what? Who rejected Christ were blinded. Hello? Hello? God didn't blind everybody and just choose. I'm going to say, I'm going to get seven Israelites and I'm going to say to them, the rest of them I'm going to blind. No, nope. he foreknew. The whole premise of this teaching right through here is the foreknowledge of God of those who would accept Jesus Christ. And that is the remnant. Remember, the ones that he reserved to himself, the 7,000 reserved, are the ones who did not bow their knee to Baal. Go back and study it. He didn't make them not bow the knee. They didn't bow the knee, and therefore he reserved them to himself. These accepted Jesus, therefore they were what? Elect according to grace, and the rest who rejected Jesus were blinded. That's the premise, and that's the teaching here. Somebody say glory. According as it is written, God hath given them a spirit of slumber, eyes that should not see, and ears that should not hear unto this day. Who? The ones who, who didn't receive. Who? The ones who rejected God's plan. The remnant that accepted it are the ones who got it. And David saith, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back all way. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather that their fall, salvation has come unto the Jews for provoke them to jealousy. Now to fall them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles. Now see, now Paul's going to come right back over here and start thinking, don't get cocky. Remember Star Wars? You know, Luke and um, Hans are in the little pod shooting down the, you know, the, the imperial pod fighters or whatever they call those guys. TIE Fighters? I'm shooting the TIE Fighters. And, and, and Luke goes, I got one. Great, kid. Don't get cocky. That's kind of what's going on here. You know, Jews, you don't have anything special in the Gentiles. You got to see Jesus. Now, you Gentiles, don't get cocky. Okay? For I speak unto you Gentiles as much as I'm an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation that which are my flesh and might save some of them. Might save some of them. Might save some of them. <clears throat> For if casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them, them be, be but life from the dead? Now, let me say something. There's going to be a lot of Jews that get saved during the tribulation. There's going to be a lot of Jews that come in. For if the first fruit be holy, and the lump is holy, and the root be holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches that were broken off, and thou being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and were made partakers of the root and the fatness of the olive tree. In other words, you were outside the covenant, but you got brought in, and you received the blessings of that covenant. I'll bless them that bless thee, the, the blessing of Abraham, the Abrahamic covenant. Amen? If you received that, if you're as a Gentile, you were able to walk into that, you know, because you were grafted into the, the tree. Um, boast not against the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. In other words, don't get cocky. Ah, oh, see, look at us. God brought, saved us. You're going to hell, huh? No. Have you noticed there's a hatred for Israel? And for a long, for many, 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 many years, there was a hatred of Israel from Christians. They, they just didn't read Romans 11. They used to call Jews, after, you know, they used to call Jews Christ killers. Hello? No, we all killed Christ. Our sin held him to the cross. He, our sin nailed him to the cross. Y'all hear you going home. Thank you for your enthusiasm. <clears throat> thou wilt say then the branches are broken off that I might be grafted in glory to God 
Well, because of unbelief, they were, because of unbelief, they were broken off. Now, notice here, Paul did not say because of God's foreordained plan, he broke them off so he could save the Gentiles. He said their unbelief broke them off. We got to read the whole Bible. Come on, church. We've got to read the whole Bible. Can't pick and choose and create doctrines that are erroneous and because, because we heard somebody teach something and we just use a little bit of the Bible and leave the rest of it out. Paul said because of their unbelief, they were broken off. Amen. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. In other words, what? Unbelief. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell severity, but toward thee goodness. If thou continue. Now, you people who preach, it doesn't matter what you do. You're going, God's going to love you and God's going to save you. He says, if you continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. Yeah. Now, what do they do with that one? It doesn't matter what you do. You're under grace. Really? Well, here's Grace Writer 101, Paul. Yeah. Now, the Jews got cut off because they were in unbelief. And if you don't continue in God's goodness, you'll get cut off too. Woo! I just get fed up with stupid teaching. I get, I get tired of the church and people being taught, taught stuff that's only setting them up for failure in the long run. Sounds good on the front end. Everybody gets goosebumps on the front end. Everybody gets hunky-dory on the front end. Everybody throws big offerings in on the front end. And then when the, light, the crisis of life hit, their feet end up where their head was two seconds before, and they, and they walk away because they believed a lie. Instead of training and developing and bringing them up in Christ. I uh, way on down somewhere. Yeah. And if they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. Then how are they going to get? How are the Jews going to get back in? If they abide not still in unbelief, they don't get in just because they're a Jew. How do they get in? Are we working now? Ah, praise the Lord. I can walk over here now. It's my, it's my better side. Anyway. Praise the Lord. Oh. No. Get clowns on the cameras and they take a all right. And if they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. In other words, now we, we see they're blinded, but God's able to take them. If they come to believing in Christ, they can be regrafted back into the kingdom. But they, didn't, they could not continue to abide in unbelief. This isn't some preordained they're going to get saved no matter what. This is, there is, there is an act of faith on their part to receive Jesus Christ. And what happens? They get grafted in. They become Christians. They become born again. They become members of the body of Christ. Amen. And But if thou were cut off out of the olive tree which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? Praise God. That means they'll fit right in. <clears throat> For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. Lest ye should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part is, uh, happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. In other words, God's allowed their blindness because of their rejection to stay there until the Gentiles come in. Okay? And so all Israel shall be saved. Which Israel? I'm sorry. Happen, and blindness in part is it, it happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion a deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Now which all Israel? The all Israel that believed. It's not, it's not the ones who reject. The, uh, the rejected ones don't believe. They don't get saved. Okay? It's the, it's the ones that believe. All of them get saved. All right? Um, that shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So this is my covenant unto them that I will take away their sins 
according to the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the following. Which election? The election of the ones he foreknew. See, you just can't take that one verse down here. All of Israel that believes get saved. Okay? Not, not everybody in Israel is going to get saved because there will be those who reject. It's concerning the God. Well, you remember, what, what was Judas? He ain't going to get saved. No? Are you here? As, a court, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts of callings are God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, ye have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these also not now believed, and through your mercy they shall obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. And the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his riches, and his ways passing finding out. Who hath known the mind of the Lord, and who hath been his counselor, or who hath gotten given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again. For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Now he's going to move into chapter 12 and move away from this whole subject. <clears throat> all, the, the, all the Jews who come, and there are going to be a bunch of Jews who come in the end. They're going to, they're going to be saved. That's a bunch who didn't believe. They went to, you know, there was a rich man named Lazarus. There was a rich man and, and, and a beggar named Lazarus. Where was the rich man? He was in hell. Who was he? He was a Jew. So, so if, you, if you have to take it into context, all those that are in the foreknowledge of God shall be saved. They're going to be saved. They're going to come into the kingdom of God. God's going to have a bunch of Jews get saved, primarily in the, in the, in the tribulation. Because we see when Christ comes to get the church, <laughs> they're going to think that was his first coming. <laughs> Hello? And many are going to believe. You talk about walking in darkness. I mean, you know, they walk in such dark. I mean, who do the Jews vote for in America? Every whacked out liberal thing you can think of, they vote for it. They're blinded. Yet their own law tells them all those things are wrong. But they're walking in a depth of blindness. It's amazing. Are you here? But then the veil's going to be taken off, and they're going to, I mean, they're going to, they're going to just by droves come into the kingdom. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Somebody say, hallelujah. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, that's going to be it for today. Yep. Hallelujah. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address P.O. Box 7752 Greensboro, North Carolina 27417 If you would like to contribute to our ministry please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button Thank you and may God richly bless you for your giving